Alright, hello everyone and welcome to episode 38 of Zero to Hero. And it is, of course, a very special episode. We are at the World Cup and uh, we're warming the England bench. Uh, so as far as our group is concerned for the three Lions, it's us, Switzerland, Qatar and the United States of America. So on paper, a group we should really be finishing in the top two four. Um, our first game is obviously up against Jordan Shakiri. Uh, and uh, Xhaka and Berkey and the rest of the Swiss lot. And there's been a bit of a, um, shall we say, plot twist where um, Qatar are no longer hosting the World Cup and instead the World Cup is actually being hosted in England. Uh, so we should notice a nice variety of English stadiums being used within this episode. As far as we're concerned... We're lining up with the 3 6 1, as it calls it, uh, with Dowell actually playing just off Harry Kane alongside Deli Alley. Very surprised to see him chosen over Mason Mount, given how good Mason Mount has been for us in the build up to the friendlies and the qualifiers. And of course, some danger men, really, for the Swiss. They've got some good players like Shakiri, Zachariah, Xhaka, and Berkey in goal. Uh, now, one thing that's worth mentioning is that we will probably take a short break from international matches after this tournament. Give it a couple of years before we actually start playing with England again, just because it'll allow us to focus on our own personal development a little bit better. I felt like the England stuff came at a good time, at a time where we were getting a little bit kind of bored and blocked in Japan. Uh, where the game wouldn't let us transfer out of Japan, basically. Uh, but anyhow, um, obviously first game, because we're the hosts, it's practically the first game of the World Cup, and it was upsetting, you know, but kind of typical when England go 1-0 down. Deli Ali's head, though, came to the rescue as he got the equaliser, and then straight from the kickoff after we got that equaliser, um, Zachariah played in a jetty, who then made it 2-1 to the Swiss. So considering the English here are on home soil, considering we're playing this first game of the World Cup at Wembley, uh, to be 2-1 down against Switzerland is certainly nowhere near what the doctor will have ordered. And uh, we went 3-1 down just after the break. Zachariah, who'd had a really good game all round, playing just off the striker, uh, managed to get into the box. I'm not quite sure what kind of shambolic defending that was, I think, from potentially Mason Holgate. And then suddenly, you know, we had quite a, a steep hill to climb, and it became an even steeper hill when Zachariah got his second, and you could see what it meant to the Swiss. Um... Yeah, you know, a very upsetting result, and uh, to be honest, didn't really see it coming, didn't really see it um, reaching this kind of stage, but if there's one thing you get with England, it's that never-say-die attitude, and uh, Jadon Sancho met the ball, met a Harry Kane low cross uh, down that right-hand side, and just about managed to turn it in past Roman Burki to make it 4-2. No idea why the scoreboard says for Switzerland. Um, we then made it 4-3 or 3-4 as Raheem Sterling popped up, Holgate and Stone celebrating it, uh, probably somewhat relieved because all the goals that they haven't defended very well are starting to be negated. Um, and, you know, it made you wonder, was the comeback on? Was the comeback going to be real? I eventually got substituted on with 10 minutes to go for Harry Winks. And even though I was playing as a defensive midfielder, that's another reason why I'm trying to avoid you know, considering potentially giving England a break for a while because I don't really enjoy my role in that team. Um, I wanted to get forward a little bit more, try and get us that equaliser goal, but uh, a very, very nice passage of passing, very, very nice passage of play from the Swiss. They basically just passed it right through us. We defend far too deep, um, and, you know, that ball there, they're just taking advantage of the space between uh, the three centre-backs. So, yeah, we conceded five goals to Switzerland. Uh I don't really know how to how to explain it, um, but fortunately it won't be my job to try and explain it. It will be Gareth Southgate's job <laughs> to try and explain it um, because, you know, when you come into a World Cup like this on home soil, you expect England to do well. Um, and we came up against Qatar next. Now, Qatar are probably the weakest team at the tournament. They're only really at the tournament because they were meant to be hosting it, but because we don't have Qatari stadiums, we've created this altar universe where the World Cup is actually going to be hosted in England instead. Uh, I was relieved to see Mason Mount brought back into the side because he's a talent and a half. And I know it might seem weird that I'm playing for England as a, as a championship player, as a Blackburn player, 
Um, but when you look at the average ages of some of these players, um, you look at some players like Mason Mount, who actually in the game is still playing for Derby in the Championship, Jack Butland, who actually is still playing for Stoke in the Championship, um, and some of the players on the bench who are also in Championship teams. Um, you know, in terms of where the game's currently at, it's not too unrealistic. Um, but yeah. So, that is the Qatari lineup, and uh, that is what the score ended at after the first half. A bit of a shambles, really, at Stamford Bridge. Um, pff, don't think I can blame fatigue, because it doesn't take that long to travel between Stamford Bridge and Wembley. Uh, I did eventually get substituted on around the... Uh, uh, I, I mean, I can't see what minute it was here. I can't remember either. Uh, <laughs> Harry Kane, around the 60th minute, Harry Kane came on. Um, to try and give us a different focal point up front for Marcus Rashford. And bada bing, bada boom, I decided to grab my first ever World Cup goal. And I mentioned it a couple of episodes ago playing in Japan that I've never really scored any screamers from outside the box. So I'm really glad I decided to leave, you know, that screamer that has been building up inside of me for the, a World Cup match against Qatar as well. Qatar of all teams, and I'll explain why Qatar of all teams. So, obviously, as well as being English, I am also a Lebanese, which means that um, I also follow the Lebanese national football team alongside supporting the England national football team. I mean, it's very rare they're both at the same tournament anyway, so I can be a bit of a glory hunter if you can call a Lebanese football fan a glory hunter in the first place. Uh, Qatar had a very good chance there, superb double save from Jack Butland. In fact, it was a triple save, um, and we managed to clear the ball away. And, uh, yeah, so... Uh, the Lebanese national team, I think it was around 10 years ago, under German manager Theo Bouquet, um, managed to basically surpass the uh, second stage of the World Cup qualifiers for the first time ever. And all that was really, they, they were competing in the third place playoff. So what will have happened was we ended up needing to play Qatar. And if we had beat Qatar, we'd have had to play Uruguay in the third place decider because I think the third place deciding Asian team plays the South American one so we probably wouldn't have beat Suarez and Cavani and that Uruguay team but we had a match against Qatar and the mass majority of the Qatari players are basically players who like aren't even from Qatar but have been given the Qatar nationality been given the Qatar passport there's a goal there header and um, just to ruin the clean sheet from an M Saleh think it's a bit of a budget Mo Salah um, but we got the three points in the end even though it wasn't a very convincing tournament a uh, very convincing match but anyways back to the story uh, so yeah it's a must win game against the USA coming up next and uh, basically most of the Qatari players aren't actually Qatari they, they've just been given the nationality to play football for the national team like for God's sake the guy playing up front is actually from Uruguay called Sebastian Soria like that is not a Qatari name <laughs> Uh, if you Google it, you can read more about the controversy around, obviously, the Qatar national football team. Um, and in the particular Qatar versus Lebanon scenario, it turned out that the we Lebanon lost 1-0 uh, due to a, a stupid back pass own goal type thing. And it turned out that that player was bribed and paid a very, very large chunk of money. Um, and it turned out that some players were also done, also potentially received the same. And there was a big you know, banned from FIFA around it and stuff. So definitely look into it um, as uh, the Stars and Stripes sing their national anthem. Obviously, standout player for them, Pulisic. I hope I haven't bored you with that story. But, uh, yeah, if you're interested in that kind of thing, learning something new, go look it up. Um, I'm sure you'll find a Wikipedia page or something on it. Probably didn't do a very good job of describing it. Um, but, yeah, Dowell made his way back into the side. He actually plays for Bristol City in the Championship. Uh, so Pro Evo shines once again. Uh, Novakovic way up front for the Americans. Pulisic, of course, in midfield. They're playing a bit of a diamond. Um, I would have really liked to start this game in the wide areas. But so we have some very good wide players in the form of Sterling and Sancho. So on paper, it should have been a good game for us. Not really quite sure why he kept on deciding to play Rashford instead of Harry Kane. But yeah, that's Gareth Southgate for you. And of course, we travelled up north now, you can tell, because it's suddenly raining. Uh, and we're playing this World Cup match at Old Trafford. So, straight from the kickoff, Novakovic scored. <laughs> you know, in a must win game for England, um, it barely took a minute for the States to break the deadlock. And uh, I, I, I don't know. I can't really explain what was happening, especially in this scenario here where I'm not even on the pitch. It's kind of, kind of annoying because I've been looking forward to this World Cup. Um, for the past season and uh, we're on the verge of being knocked out here 
Two minutes later, though, we just about managed to get the equaliser. Just about. And it was Marcus Rashford, who's probably feeling a little bit more comfortable on home soil in the Theatre of Dreams. Um, goalkeeper not too pleased about that. It was a pretty simple goal as well. Now, one thing I've noticed is that a lot of the goals that we've conceded as part of this England side so far this tournament has been through, like, crossing scenarios like this. Um, and it's somewhat reminiscent of when we played with that three at the back formation at uh, Vivar and Nagasaki. So I think there definitely is something weird going on with the AI and three at the back formations. So when you download a patch or you're, you're playing as a team where, you know, the team just in real life play with a three at the back formation, it just translates terribly in game to the AI. Uh, and there was another goal for Novakovic from, you guessed it, a cross. Um, so England 2-1 down at this stage to the Yanks. A good tackle there from one of our defenders and we looked to try and counter-attack. Got the ball wide. Lovely 1-2 between Jaden Sancho and Marcus Rashford. But the 1-1 -on -one situation, he put the ball wide and, uh, you know, you expect Marcus Rashford to do a lot better there. Heck, if it was me in that scenario, you'd have expected me to do a lot better. And Marcus Rashford is a much better player than, than I am. Anyhow, just before half time, we conceded another one. I can't really explain that one. Eric Dyer seemed to just watch the ball and uh, where, I think that's how you uh, pronounce it, got clotheslined in true, uh, true Triple H fashion. But uh, they didn't care because they scored a triple goal. 3 1. And Gareth Southgate, if he was to try and keep England in the remainder of this tournament, had to make some significant changes uh, going into the second half. And. Um, yeah, that's when he decided to substitute me on as a defensive midfielder. And this is another thing that's quite annoying about Become a Legend. It's that uh, your managers don't change tactics. That's it. Like, managers don't change between teams if managers are doing poorly, which is annoying. Because it could add a nice element to it. I play in Rashford A, which should really score. Um, it adds a nice element into it where if you can't break into the team or you don't fit a particular tactic, but then your manager gets sacked, a new manager could come in and start playing you, you get another chance. Um, so yeah, that's a lovely ball for me. Once again, into the path of Marcus Rashford. I was trying to call for him to pass it back to me, but he seems set on shooting. He was very, very wasteful all game, Marcus Rashford, which is disappointing. Um, and yeah, that adaptation concept like here, we're 4-1 down. It's highly unlikely that you're going to maintain three centre-backs on the pitch with two defensive midfielders parking the bus right in front of them. Um, you'd probably put me on in a more advanced attacking scenario. But to be honest, when Ware got his hat-trick there, it was pretty much game over and done with. Um, Jack Butland, you know, understandably looking bereft of any confidence. And uh, I, I, I don't know, England have managed to cock up at a World Cup yet again. <sighs> Anyways, um, I wanted another goal. Uh, I, stepped, I kept pushing forwards. Uh, Marcus Rashford somehow, after missing all those easy chances, managed to pull off that absolute worldy of a goal. Picked up the ball, went straight back to the centre spot. Um, you know, in this kind of scenario, you probably, you, instead of subbing me on as a second defensive midfielder, you sub on Harry Kane. And this is what I mean about the small details in Pro Evo. So, sometimes letting down the poor immersion in Pro Evo. So people talk about gameplay in Pro Evo being better than FIFA and a lot of elements in Pro Evo being better than FIFA. Whilst FIFA's more arcadey, um, which I agree with. Um, but uh, what FIFA gives you is that awesome immersion, which lets you see past some of the gameplay glitches. Not to say that Pez doesn't have any gameplay glitches, of course. I mean, England getting knocked out of the World Cup in the group stages is a massive glitch in its own right. And to make it worse, to add salt to the wounds, or rub salt into the wounds, we finished bottom of the group. I mean, we conceded 11 bloody goals, guys. 11 goals, and you ask me why I want a break from England. Yes, I want a break from Gareth Southgate and his England side. Um, so if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Colombia somehow won the World Cup. Belgium finished in third place. Uh, it was a full-on South American derby between Colombia and Chile in the final. Uh, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for watching.